Hi, this is Drew Vernon with the F Expansion BFD team. We've just released a new update for BFD3, version number 3.3, which introduces a new feature called Macro Snapshots. Macro Snapshots are a great way to add extra control to your drum mixes, and BFD3 ships with 10 brand new presets that all take advantage of this new functionality. Here's a preset called Big Rock. We have four macros for this preset. We have Reverb, which adds space and ambience to the drum kit, particularly the snare. We have New York style parallel compression, which adds some extra weight, some extra punch to the drums. We have this cymbals macro, which changes how much of the cymbal spot mics we hear in the mix. And finally, we have this smack control, which is doing a number of things behind the scenes to really bring our drums to life. And we can use these macros independently of one another. So we can have the full amount of smack, we can have a tiny bit of the cymbal spot mics, plenty of parallel compression, and then just a touch of reverb. So now I'm gonna show you how you can use the new macro snapshot functionality in your own presets and show you how beneficial they can be for your songs. So here I have BFD Crush loaded into BFD3 and we have a song in the background. First, let's open the macro snapshots panel. You can find this in the tools menu and the option is called Show Macro Snapshots. You'll see a window pop up that displays four macro controls and a range of settings. There's a learn button which will allow you to assign parameters in the plugin to any of the four macros. There's a delete all button which will clear away any settings that you've programmed. We have four macros and each one has a label and an activation button. The activation button enables the macro for creation. Then there are controls for the snapshots, but I'll cover those as we go. Let's set up our first macro. I activate Learn, and the first thing that you're going to see is that all the controls in BFD3 have an overlay color applied to them. This indicates they're available for mapping. And if I right click on some of these faders, I get the option to add them to a macro. And so there I've just added the amp mix, the shells, the cymbals and the reverb faders all to macro 1. And then I can turn off learn mode. If I now activate macro 1 for creation, you're going to see that the parameters assigned to macro 1 get highlighted in the relevant colour. And we have snapshot 1 created in the snapshots list. It's important to state that we don't actually have any control at this point. We just have the connection between the macro and the parameters. But now that I have my first snapshot, if I change the level of these faders and then use the new snapshot button, we get a second snapshot. And now the macro will blend between snapshot one and snapshot two. Let's create another snapshot. And for this one, I want mostly shells, no cymbals, no reverb channel, and about halfway on the ambient bus. Let's create another snapshot. And we get snapshot three, but these snapshots can be in any order that I choose. I can rearrange them using the swap buttons here. So let's place snapshot three in the middle of the knobs travel. And now, I can blend between three snapshots. I can even choose a snapshot and change its name. So snapshot one, we can call full. And if I select a snapshot and hit recall, that snapshot will load. And we can name snapshot three shells. We could do the same for snapshot two and name it silence.
can also delete snapshots using the delete button. And if I select a snapshot and recall it and decide that I want to make a change, let's say I want to bring down the ambient channels for the full snapshot, we can do the action and then we can replace the snapshot. And now that snapshot will be updated. So hopefully now you're beginning to see just how powerful this system can be. Let's move on to some more advanced examples. So sticking with my Crush kit, let's program some more advanced macros. Let's come over to my effects view and take a look at the amp mix, the shells, the symbols, and the master channel. Each one of these channels has a range of effects processing already going on. We're going to control these effects modules to get a variety of tones. Coming over to my shells bus, let's enable learn and start to map some of these parameters to macro one. And what we're going to aim for here is a kind of punchiness control. And it's important to state that any parameter that you do want to control from a macro absolutely has to be mapped to a macro. That should do it for this. Let's turn off Learn Mode and enable the macro for creation. We get our initial snapshot, which is all of the values that were there previously. Let's get something that sounds a bit more punchy. Let's create a new snapshot. Snapshot 2 is going to represent the maximum amount of punch that this macro can give us. And now, if we just dial back the macro slightly, we're going to blend back to the more raw sounding drums of snapshot 1. So this allows us to dial in the perfect amount of punchiness just using two snapshots. Let's rename the macro. We'll call it punch. And let's rename the snapshot. Snapshot one we'll call raw. And snapshot two we'll call hype. And we'll disable the macro so that we can move on to the next one. Now in my mixer, under the sends, I've already set up a reverb send for all of the shells and that's this reverb bus over here on the right and that bus has a gain control right at the start of it and currently it's set to minus infinity gain which means that no signal actually gets through to our reverb let's map this gain control to macro 2 we hit learn we right click on the control and we go add to macro 2 we turn off Learn and we enable Macro 2 to get our initial snapshot and then we position the knob to the value that gives us the maximum amount of reverb that we want. And then we create a new snapshot and Macro 2 now acts as our master reverb send control. So let's rename Macro 2, Reverb, rename Snapshot 1, Off, and name Snapshot 2, Full, 
and turn off Macro 2. Macro 3, we're going to do something with our ambient mix bus. So let's learn some of these controls. And I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to progressively compress and brighten the mix bus. And we'll also have a little OTA distortion. Activate macro 3. Change our parameters. Let's add quite a lot of airiness to the bus. Let's compress. Take away some of the attack. Increase some of the sustain. So now we have this kind of pumping effect. Create a new snapshot. And now we can blend between those two different sounds for our ambient bus. Let's name the macro. And we'll call it Ambience. Snapshot 1, raw, snapshot 2, pumping, and let's dial it back a little bit, about midway sounds good. Now you don't have to use macros just for mix parameters, you can use them for drum parameters as well. So let's create a control that tightens up our toms. We'll open the model panel and we know that we have the damping controls. Let's learn those for each of the toms to macro 4. Since we have six toms, let's do all of these so that we can dampen our toms from a single knob. We'll turn off Learn and activate Macro 4, and we get our first snapshot. And now we just need to go through each tom and set the amount value to around noon. And you should start to hear that the toms don't decay as much as they were before which means that a lot of the low-end resonance that you get from Tom microphones is now gone. Let's create our second snapshot. And now Macro 4 acts as a Tom resonance control. This is without. And this is with. So let's name this macro Toms. Let's name Snapshot 1 Full Decay and Snapshot 2 Half Decay. So now, closing the Snapshots panel, I have four macros that I can use in this song. And I can obviously assign these to any host automation parameter or my MIDI controller, and I can control them on the fly. Right now I'm just using the mouse, but the principle is the same as any other control in BFD. And once we've set up a preset that we like the sound of, we can come over to the file menu and we can 
choose save preset and we can save it to our user presets folder Drew's proggy drum kit and now I can use that preset in any song that I wish thanks for watching and if you have any questions please post below if you're on YouTube or indeed on Facebook and you can contact the FXpansion support team through roly.com or fxpansion.com and any assistance that you require we will be very glad to help. Thanks very much.